Welcome to Italy. We're going to be heading up into those hills there to hunt pheasant, grey partridge and chucker. With this, this is a Cosme, a break open seven shot semi-automatic. Before we go hunting, I was at the factory yesterday. Let's have a look round. As a company, Cosme has been building guns for 130 years. It was started in the hills of Montefeltro, but since 1936, they have been in the city of Ancona. Entering the factory is like stepping back in time, where handcraft and hand finishing are their core values. However, as you'll find out, they have big plans. Ali. Hi guys, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thank you very much, welcome in Cosme. Right, this place is pretty amazing. <laughs> thank you very much, we're glad that you like it. It's a little bit like stepping back in time, Yeah. but it is. we've got some modern technology too, it's a strange sort of juxtaposition. Yes, that's right, and uh, we're trying you know, to match technology you know, and craftsmanship of course, because uh, our company has more than 125 years, so we need to combine the two things and hopefully we are doing like a nice job. We are really happy about the new course of the uh, the company and Mr. Rodolfo Cosmi is uh, still working inside the company and the new owner also wanted to improve, you know, all the system and uh, all our machining part in this yeah. way. As we discussed before we filmed, when, when a machine can do something that much better, that much quicker, yeah. like machining an action block, yeah, exactly. it doesn't make sense to do it on that. Exactly. I mean, nowadays, I mean, we need to improve to, to be faster, you know. We don't want to achieve like a, a huge amount of gun, you know, produced yearly, but we just want, you know, to make the things like a little bit faster. So in a certain time, you know, we would like to produce 10 receiver instead of five, which is totally fair, I think. Yes. Uh, and with, with tolerances that are maybe better than by And hand. of course, of course, because you know, the machine are, I mean, if you program the machine like in a, in a proper way, of course, the result is gonna be absolutely fine and, uh, uh, and cool. All right, so should we start right at the beginning with turning a piece of metal into the action? Absolutely, please follow me. So this one is one of uh, our latest new machine. It's like a five axle and uh, we used to produce like some component of our semi-automatic shotgun and also uh, the over and under, you know. So we basically produce the receiver. So this one in uh, specific is the lower receiver of the semi-automatic shotgun, our smooth bore, you know. And uh, this is like uh, the uh, first passage, you know, inside okay. the machine. Then we will put it back and we will do like the second course. And we used to produce all our guns from a solid and unique piece of steel. Of course, it, it takes more time because uh, the process is, go is, is going to be longer, you know, but uh, of course the quality is a uh, hundred times better than uh, any other else, you know. Now a few times we will put these receiver back inside to finish you know all the process turn it into this and turning it into this so this is like the final product and know? this has got this now goes into be finished by hand that's exactly. the last machining this receives exactly then we, the, our guys uh, in the uh, uh, assembly you know part of the company they will polish it they will work on it that uh, they need to adapt you know all the uh, mechanical inside and the system inside the receiver and then uh, we need to put all like all the gun together. So that's that's the split we're talking about machining. Exactly. Craftsmanship. Exactly. So it's like a combine of machining and uh, old-fashioned work, but I mean it's really important, you know, for us and for our customer to pass and to give, you know, the sensation to the final customer that uh, there are like a lot of powers, you know, in yeah. working on our shotgun. And as I've told you. One of our car, um, shotgun uh, is produced in 400 hours, more or less, so. Without engraving? Without engraving. 400 hours of hand work. Yes, exactly. I mean, I've, I've said many times, this gun shouldn't exist. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's pure, crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, it, it is. But it's like a, a really incredible 
shotgun because it's like I think so far the only one semi-automatic shotgun in the world which break open as a side by side or an over and under, you know. And um, the craziest things as I've told you before is that uh, everything was invented 125 years ago. So a lot of time ago, but still actual, you know. It is awesome. All right, next. Next, let's go to the assembling part of the company. It may sound strange, but I love old-fashioned engineering. So I couldn't resist stopping to have a look. So we're surrounded by old machines as well. Do you still use the old machines? Of course we do. And uh, I mean, they are like fundamental parts, you know, for the construction of our gun. So a lot of passages are still making on this kind of machine because, I mean, they are, let's say, more proper than the modern one. Somehow, you know, we use them, we still use them, and we are happy to use them. What is amazing is this. Yes. Not only that this is a 410? Yes. Firstly, is. this is a 410 barrel. It is. But the loop, is it a loop, I suppose? Yeah, the ring, loop, whatever. Is one piece with the barrel. Yes, exactly. That's always been the way that it was done? Yes, it is, it is. I mean, as uh, all the cosmic concept, you know, also the barrel are worked, you know, from a solid piece of steel. So that's the reason why I mean, we need like a, a, a huge one. And uh, you, uh, you got like the smaller one because uh, you can imagine with the Gauge 12, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, you got the, a big the, the solid- block of steel. Yeah, exactly. The block of the steel is like even bigger. But of course, uh, I mean, it's uh, all the way better, you know, to work the barrel in this way because you don't have like any other passages. Yeah. It's gonna take a while, you know, to have like the wool barrel done and finished because uh, I mean, when you finish, you know, to, to give this kind of shape, you need to do the hole, you know, inside the rings which is not really, really easy because, I mean, everything needs to be... Perfect. Perfect, exactly. And then uh, the second step is to uh, lap, you say, like, yes. right in English, to lap, you know, the inside of the barrel and prepare it, you know, to, uh, for, the, for the shooting uh, proof. I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna say it multiple times in this video. These guns are just a bit silly. Yes, it is. Everything it is. is done extra when there's probably a simpler way. Yes. But that's why it's beautiful. Uh, yes. And that's why I'm so fascinated yes. by it. Yes, yes, yes. I I'm, I'm agree with you. I mean, um, of course, you can find like an easier way or a faster way to do everything, but we would like to stay as we were 125 years ago. If you took every gunstock in the world and every gunstock maker and lined them up, I guarantee you that a Cosme stock would be the last to be chosen. They are legendary for being the hardest to make. So for those of you who haven't realized it at this point, the entire mag tube feeds down into the stock. Exactly. It's a very large piece of metal and a pistol grip can only be so big without being uncomfortable. And as such, you've got what, three or four millimeters of wood? This means that more than ever, wood selection is key. Straight, strong, flexible grain is in. Everything else is out. The most dangerous part, let's say, is this one because, you know, the spaces between the tubular magazine and the hop and the, the, the hopper part and the yeah. tower part is like really, really low. And uh, if you don't choose uh, the right wood and if you don't work in a proper way, you know, all the blank, the risk is that, uh, I mean, the, the stock could crack, you know, here. Of course, thanks of God, uh, we have reached a level that... Now, 125 years of experience <laughs> exactly. says, so, don't pick the wrong wood. Exactly. You bore the hole, it then... This is done by machine. This is one of the, again, another of the processes that you're saving some time by having the headwork now CNC. Yes, I mean, uh, let's say that since uh, some years uh, we are machining, you know, the, the biggest part of, uh, uh, of the stock. 
and but then of course uh, I mean uh, our uh, one of the the guys who is in charge of the the stock uh, was do like a lot of job you know in scratching let's say and yeah. uh, so it's saving him taking it down a lot but uh, there's still an infinite amount of work. The hard work starts now. Every Cosme is hand fitted to the customer. Absolutely, yes. Okay. I mean, it's like a, it's a, a tailor-made gun, you know, so you can come here, uh, you uh, decide, you can pick and choose, uh, I mean, the, the, the blank, and then we can take the measure, we will do it with the right pull uh, for the customer needs. Before we see the craftsman finish this wood, let's meet Luca, the owner of Cosme. Cosme. Why Cosme? Because since I was a kid, Cosme was a, was a dream. Think about something invented more than 100 years ago, something uh, really unique. Cosme philosophy is to create something different and something unique. We focus uh, on quality. Quality for us uh, is uh, the must. Uh, I mean, um, every single shotgun passed through the hands of our craftsmen and uh, it's uh, built with love and with passion because we, 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 we care on what we're doing in our company. I see the future of Cosme with a look on the tradition but also with a look on, on future. We are lucky because we have a, a strong know-how on how to build a, a fine firearm, a, fi a, a, a firearm that is complicated like a Cosme. So we can now think of making something new using the, the, the same way that we're building our uh, actual shotgun. For example, as, uh, as you know, since uh, the time I started working with the Cosme team, that I'm lucky to, to work with, we presented to the market the over and under, we presented the Rigato, that is the, our Cosme rifle, and uh, we are now, to, we are, we are, uh, now uh, working on the final prototype of the bolt action. So everyone's on lunch now, so... Yes, lunch time here right now, yes. Yes, they will be back in half an hour. So all the stocks come to this guy yeah. after smoothing and finishing, and then they're oil finished? Yes, I mean, we used to use the true oil, so I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the process of uh, polishing the stock is, is pretty long because it's gonna take at least 30, 35 days, you know, and uh, every day we used to put like uh, two or three hands, you know, of true oils and, uh, we need to put in and uh, wait to, uh, to to let it dry. And then take it off. And then take it off. It's exactly. ridiculous, isn't it? When you think it about all finishing. Much easier just to spray lacquer on. <laughs> <laughs> it should be faster, but I mean, you it's... know, the final result is the most appreciated from our customer. So why did you go with true oil and not anything else? Uh, I mean, the, you know, the brightness at the end, you know, and, uh, you know, all, uh, all the, the, the polishing process is all the way better with the true oil than uh, rather to other, you know. Uh, it's, it's very hard to beat. Absolutely. It's very hard to beat. Uh, uh, absolutely. But, and then, you know, the, the final result, as I've told you, is really appreciated from our customers. So where are they checkered? Just at the, well, probably just here. Yeah, yeah. over there. So it's awesome. All by hand. All by hand. All by hand. Of course. Of course. Of I course. Mean. Uh, you, you saw before that uh, we are like, uh, um, an uh, uh, updated part, you know, uh, in terms uh, of machine, but uh, uh, we are really focused to pass, you know, the craftsmanship that uh, our shotguns still have uh, inside their uh, journey uh, from uh, the, the moment of the order till the moment of the delivery. Yeah, and keeping those things sacred, hand checkering, hand oil finishing, ah, hand polishing. Absolutely, yeah, we are proud of it. <laughs> This is the assembling room, so part of our guys are literally working hours and hours inside here because, uh, of course, it's like the, the, the most important part of the company because uh, all the little thing, the little defect, let's say, that uh, will come up after Both the machining. Visual you know, and mechanical. Exactly, are, you know, uh, solving here. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, I was telling, 
to you before, <clears throat> our gun has more than 125 components, you know, inside and they are like uh, pushing inside together. So every single component is handling the other one. There's other, no screws or pins no that screws, hold the cosmetic no, together. Nothing, nothing. You just need to push everything in, inside and uh, every component uh, uh, is uh, locking the other one, you know? That's incredible. That so is this is incredible. like another one that is really insane. And this is the reason why, I mean, the the hours of work, 400 hours of work are taking to, uh, to the final, uh, to the final uh, results. You see, this is like the tubular man magazine, the one that we were talking about, and that this one uh, is, is going inside the stock, okay? And, uh, and then uh, you need to screw here, you know, the stock, so of course it would stay together with the magazine. That is awesome, isn't it? Yeah. The bend as well. To make that work must be a nightmare. Yes, I mean, it's a, it's a nightmare. And uh, honestly, when I am like in my office, when they are doing this process, I, I hear them. <laughs> <laughs> not, not with the nice and polite words, by the way, <laughs> but sometimes happen, you know. Yes, it's really, really difficult, you know, uh, to match everything uh, in, in the perfect way. So we saw some of the raw components in the other room. Now you see all of those hours of work coming together because this looks like something else completely. Absolutely, I mean, totally different phase, let's say. I mean, respect that we saw in the other room, you know, uh, this one is like uh, almost ready to be put inside the gun. All our components are unpolished, so this is like a, another reason that it it, it, it takes to us like a lot of hours, you know, to do like the, the things in a proper way. And uh, those are like all the components that are ready to be uh, inserted, you know, inside the lower receiver. This uh, particular piece is a tube where you put the cartridges yeah. inside uh, the, the, the gun. The beginning of the magazine before exactly. it goes into the, the bent pipe. So this one is the Afusto, so it's like the, let's say the tunnel mm -hmm. where you need to put the the cartridges inside and this is we call it elevator so this is like the part that push up the cartridges the lifter. yeah they lift up the cartridges the the the, the second one and then uh, with the long recall system of the barrel when the barrel uh, is back you know to the original yeah. position it take the cartridges for this from this elevator and they put it in the chamber again so as that moves back this moves up yeah it moves oh it, it, wow yes. look at that yeah that's so beautiful. We're using a V-spring. Yeah, exactly. Every stage here, you can just see how much handwork is involved in a cosmic. Exactly. That's the reason why I'm uh, uh, repeating all the time that we are like uh, super proud to be uh, a craftsmanship company, still a craftsmanship company. And a craftsmanship company they are. I meant no insult when I said entering this place is like stepping back in time. For elsewhere, these skills and principles are all but lost. How can you not fall in love with something containing this much passion? One of the wonderful things about Cosme is the constant use of titanium. Yeah. You can have a titanium upper, you can have a titanium lower, you can have both. Yes. And you can engrave both the steel and the titanium. What engraving options are there? Where are they engraved? So basically we have like uh, uh, inside the engraver uh, who is working uh, for the company. And then of course uh, we use like the uh, most prestigious name uh, in terms of engraving that we have here in Italy. So. Uh, our collaboration with uh, all these studios of Engraver is really deep. The engraving uh, uh, are chosen, of course, from the customer, so we can uh, reproduce or do whatever they want. So, uh, for example, they come uh, with uh, pics of their dogs, for example. 
uh, it happens sometimes uh, with the pics of their children as well. I mean, the, the, the most fancy. Whatever you want. Whatever you want uh, can be translated in an engraving uh, and uh, it, it can be done on the lower and on the upper receiver as well. Is there a few more limitations with titanium? I, 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 I cannot say that there are like limitations, but of course the process of the engraving as the process of the machining is getting longer with the titanium because it's a hard and super, super uh, strand, you know, uh, metal. And uh, uh, we need to add like uh, some month more than the basic model, for example, because uh, uh, it's not a problem, but it's really difficult to be engraved, yes. If a basic plane action yeah. gun is 13,000, give or take, plus VAT, yeah. what do engraving options start at? Uh, I mean, also here we are, uh, I mean, in the, it really depends on the customer needs. So we can start uh, from uh, uh, two or 3,000 and then uh, we go up to wherever, wherever they want to can take yes, you. Exactly. To go around that factory behind you was a joy, an honor, and a privilege, really. To see all of that heritage, that craftsmanship, was something to behold. There's 120 years of history in there that has not been forgotten. And yet, what's exciting is to see what Luca has been doing over these last few years, that reinvestment, and some of the things we've discussed off camera, it's really exciting to see that he wants this company to be plowing ahead for another 120 years. That will mean new products, that will mean some change, but it will not mean forgetting their roots. That original base semi-automatic will remain unchanged. It will have a bit more machining, but it will have exactly the same amount of hand finishing and love. But all that aside, that is the Adriatic Sea. This could be the only gun-making firm in the world with a view that good. Or at least the only gun-making firm in the world on a beach. It's such an inspiring view from all of inside that factory. It's like being on holiday every day at the workbench. The following morning, we travelled into the mountains to test these guns out in their natural environment. I spent my late teens hunting any legal quarry I could find with a Browning B525 and a Cocker Spaniel named Odin. And before this, I would spend hours mooching about with a Webley Eclipse in search of the same. So what is the format of this upland Italian hunting? It's natural, let's say, format. You know, we have like the point dog yeah. and the legendary Andreas who will take him around this amazing place up and down the hill. My real point here is that although I love driven shooting, I'm far more at home walking around with a gun in pursuit of game. The car is the best bit so far. Uh, yes, this is like a masterpiece, an Italian masterpiece, I can say. It's one of the best cars you've ever produced. Absolutely. Ferrari needs to step aside <laughs> for the fan of 4 4 Yes, I totally agree with you. I mean, you can go everywhere. So good luck and enjoy your hunt. And to you. This, however, was very different to how we do it back home. Because there's nobody else in this valley, right? No, non c'è nessun altro che sta cacciando qua, cioè in, in questa zona ci sono più sotto oppure c'è qualcun altro. The valley is ours. Our dogs are definitely trained differently. Dogs are wonderful. <laughs> Just had us sat on the edge of our seats for five minutes. And we have strange unwritten rules on sporting and unsporting shots. pointing. Bravo! Oh, that was exciting. 
So hey, that's, nice, pretty, eh? that's a pretty typical occasion. You get in, the, the dog's on point, yeah. and the bird will just go anyway. That was, um, it was nice. It was good. It was good. We, let, let's say we shared it. We no, shared it. no, no. He got it. And of course, we do not have hills like these. It doesn't take long to realize why upland guns are lightweight. We've only walked 250 meters uphill. We don't have hills in Hampshire. It's hot. <laughs> I was care about you and I mean, I'm, I'm sweating already. This style of shooting is fast, furious and perfectly unpredictable. This is my first proper taste of upland hunting in a different country. Oh, this is a different grave, this is awesome. Every so often, a guy's on a radio tag, he says, dog's pointing 100 meters, and we gotta run up the valley. He's just said that, let's go. So where you took your first shot, that's acceptably close. I took it... I I would, know, six meters? Like five meters. <laughs> that's okay? Yeah. The, my first Italian partridge. Straight in the pocket. In the pocket or to... Andrea, c'hai il, il, il portantino, grazie. Oh, see, this is, this is luxury. Let's go on. This is a nice gun. I mean, unsurprisingly, this Quite is a nice gun. Because we can, we had taken a few guns with us today. The new over and under, a Cosme 410, the new 4570, and this beautiful 20 gauge. This is a Super Leggero that features a titanium upper and lower. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I fell in love. It was obviously very, very nice. You have like a couple of cartridges more for me? I have as many as you want, sir. Thank you so much. No. See, it's the gun. It's the gun. It's the gun. It's the gun. We hunted on up the valley. Heading up and down the hill as the dog commanded. Yours. Great. This is the least <laughs> British thing I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you, sir. Bravo! It's at this moment that I discovered that teasing somebody for a miss is just a British thing. However, after some cultural enlightenment, we headed back to the car to change dogs and change guns. It was my turn with the 410. Seems a shame to put that away, doesn't it? Yeah. You need some success with this. And you need some success with the 410. Got it. The success is just being here. Yes. <laughs> Guns changed. Let's walk up the valley. Oh, Gino. <laughs> Gino yeah. is wild. Gino is a dude. He's the he's the boss. Let's just call him DeCampo. Meet Gino. He's a very handsome dog who has a great sense of humor. His running joke was to drag us up the side of the mountain. when there were no birds actually there. Would you drag it through the bush? This gun is 14,000 euro. His gun is 40,000 euro, 35,000 euro. 
Guess what? You're dragging them through the bush to create memories. Because that's what they're for. Isn't it amazing? Anyone who says this job is easy, they're lying. Hi, guys. It's hot. It's hot. It's unseasonably hot. Yes. Was it 20 something? Uh, 20 more, maybe. Gino is making fun of us. <laughs> He's going to go up the hill again. It's definitely up here this time. There's definitely a bird up the massive hill. Yeah. I dragged you up again and again and again. Up the side of a mountain in Italy with a steel ball pen chasing partridge. Pinch. Pinch. It's like you've had enough, boys. Don't be greedy. Until there was. We know it's there. We going? Let's go. Andiamo, Johnny. The 410 strikes again. <laughs> Bravo. That was worth the climb. Well, that was a lot of hard work. We walked all the way from down there, all the way to up there. Right. This is all you. Pepe did such a good job of clearing the easy birds that Gino was just left with the bank birds. Gino was a fitness instructor. He had us halfway up that, that mountain on the right there. Three times, three times. After one last opportunity near the car, we headed out of the hills for a peaceful lunch. So we finished hunting. Yeah. We went for lunch. Yes. We found 4G. Yeah. We found out our flights had been cancelled and we then couldn't get home for three days. <laughs> so we were intending to spend a bit more time with this. Yes. But we managed to find a flight out at near midnight tonight. So the most rushed segment ever on the Cosme Regato. Let's say that we have shot with the beauties and now we are shooting with the beast. Oh, my lad. Huh? You're selling it to me. <laughs> yes. This is a rifled Cosme. Yes, one of our latest project. And the concept is, the totally, is, is totally the same of the smooth bore, mm -hmm. but it's like a, a rifle one. We have done like uh, two different calibers, uh, 4570 and 444 Marlin. And then we are actually prototyping also the 3030, a lower receiver is based on the 28 gauge mm -hmm. and uh, the mechanism inside is based on the 410. Mm -hmm. We have like uh, adapted everything also because we uh, needed to take care about the pressure of uh, the, the gun which are like pretty high and this is like nice gun for the driven hunt mm -hmm. mainly. We have tasted it on the buffalo in Africa so Obviously. the really first test uh, has been done with uh, on buffalo. The barrel is the only part on this you don't make. We use the uh, Krieger barrel. This uh, specific barrel is uh, has a length of uh, 51 centimeters mm -hmm. And the twist rate is one in 20. Accurate to? Let, let's say that the right average for this particular weapon is 50, 60, but we have uh, tasted it on the 100 meter more or less. And it's very capable. Absolutely. All right, so I bet you didn't think you'd ever see a bespoke, handmade Italian semi-automatic 4570. Let's rock and roll. 325 grams um, after X. 50 yards? Yeah. Free hand? This is exciting. Very friendly. It is, it is. As I've told you, uh, even if it's like a 45, 70, it's uh, really generous, let's say. Because of the long recoil action. Exactly. You're not, right. you get some, but then the barrel takes it back off of you. Yeah. Welcome. Yes. 
from the bed. Of course, please. Let's, let's see if we can put a decent shot on that yes, paper. Absolutely. How was it? It's not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. It's unlike any other rifle recoil. Because you feel like it, it builds and you're like, this is gonna hurt, and it just stops. Yeah. It's a big boom and a big thump, but it's just <clears throat> not the big thump. It starts and then yeah. disappears. One, two, and three. We're happy, three out of four. Yeah, I mean, on a wild boar, it's nice. This is really rushed and I'm sorry. <laughs> And suddenly we're now into open sights. All right, let's rock and roll. It's a long, long way on open sights. That, that. <laughs> Remember, remember to push the button. Right. Well, that was amazing. I wish we could spend more time with that. That is. I know, I know. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Five centimeters off the bench, unmoderated 45 70 semi automatic. I'll take it. This is an amazing product. Thank you very much. We are really glad that you like it. We're proud of it. Is it one of the first fine quality semi automatic hunting rifles? Yeah, it is. It is. A cosmic concept. Unfortunately, I can't own one, but I can dream. Who knows? Who one knows? Day, one day. One day. Move to Italy. Move to America. Yeah. To anywhere but the UK. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That it was an amazing experience. I'm I'm sad we can't do a bit more. Next time. But we have a train to catch, a bus to catch, and a plane to catch by 11 o'clock tonight. We'll see you later. And that was that. We begun our most unpleasant voyage home. But that didn't dampen our spirits after such an amazing experience. What a place the factory was. And what a privilege to hunt with these guns in their home environment. Many of you will know that I was obsessed already. But after you've seen this, how could you not fall in love too? <laughs>